Ireland faced a very strong England team at Musgrave Park. My name is Mark. Let's talk rugby. Ireland versus England in round four of the Women's Six Nations. It's at Musgrave Park in Cork. It's on the 22nd of April. Kickoff is 2.15 BST. So we're going to have a quick look at the two teams, starting with the home team, Ireland. In the backs, they have Delaney, Doyle, Dalton, Irwin, Bevan, O'Brien, Scuffle, McCabe. Forwards then, Jugang, Jones, Haney, Friday, Monaghan, Hogan, Moore and Nick Verd. Replacements, Nielsen, McGrath, Boogie, O'Connor, Brown, Cronin, McGann and Dealey. The England team then, Back circle, Dunn, Dow, Tuma, Hurd, MacDonald, Atchison and Hunt. Forwards, Botterman, Powell, Muir, Aldcroft, Beckett, Kabea, Packer and Matthews. That's Marley Packer. Replacements then, Davies, Carson, Byrne, Burns, Ta- Talling, Lucy Packer, Reed, and Rowland. Okay, so... This is ninth ranked in the world versus first ranked. And Ireland have made three changes to their starting 15 from the team that lost to Italy. We have Ricky Irwin returns to the centres. Anna McGann drops to the bench. Molly Scuffle McCabe returns at nine with Elsa Hughes dropping out of the matchday squad. Brittany Hogan replaces the injured Dorothy Wall. England have made seven changes that have just made what was a very strong team even stronger. Got Ellie Kildun starting at fullback in place of Emma Singh. Abby Dow switching to the right wing as Claudia McDonald returns on the left wing. Jess Breach drops out of the matchday squad. Natasha Hunt returns from injury at nine. And Lucy Packer drops to the bench. Hannah Bodderman, Connie Powell and... Maud Moore come into the front row. Sarah Beckett comes into the second row. As I said, this is an extremely strong England team. Let's have a look at how the teams have gone so far. So England last game against Italy, or sorry, Ireland last game against Italy had 62% possession, 66% territory, but they found it really hard to create clear-cut chances. England, by contrast, is 42% possession, 53% territory, against Wales and, you know, ran up a big score against them. Ireland scored 0.9 points per visit to 22, while England scored 3.9 points per visit, which is, you know, an amazing um, tally when you think of it. Like, it's almost a try every time they're getting into the 22, and that is very, very scary for any team coming up against them. Ireland... Um, there are some positives for them, though. They've conceded just three scrum, scrum penalties to Six Nations, and that's better only by England, who've gone 100% for the first three rounds, and they conceded, like, two scrum penalties. Um, handling errors, then um, Ireland's rate is 4%. Again, it's second behind England. England is also 4%, but, like, it'd be a go-to some places England is slightly better than Ireland and I suppose one one of the big differences England play at a much higher tempo and more intricate than Ireland as well so you know Ireland are doing well but I'd like to see them maybe even make more errors but try and you know um, push their attacking game a bit more Ireland then tackle success 78 percent is a bit of a worry. It's the worst in the Six Nations over the first three rounds, but it should improve as the team gels. Like this is a very um, inexperienced team, and you know a lot of players playing together for you know the, the first tournament together. So that is going to improve with time. England's tackle success rate of ninety one percent is excellent. Um, Derville and Nickerbird and Sam Monahan are in the top five uh, carriers in the tournament in terms of number of carries. 
and Abbey Dow is the top carrier overall in terms of meters made. She has made 525 meters. England have four of the top um, players in terms of meters made in the tournament. Just shows you, you know, how um, formidable this team is. It's all across the park. It's not just one or two really good players. Ireland though have some decent players. Nicola Friday is one of the most lineouts in the tournament with 20. Zoe Allcroft of England is second with 18. Lee Jones then has made the third most tackles in the tournament. That's pretty, you know, great going by her when you consider that Ireland have actually tackled the least in the entire tournament. So she has been really a, a defensive rock for Ireland. Um, Lucy Packer has made the most passes with 222 in the entire tournament so far. And Derbyn Nickerbird is sixth for metres carried with 285 metres for Ireland. So in her debut Six Nations, you know, with, with less than 10 caps to her name, that is, you know, really big impact from her. And it's great to see. You can see a lot of players you know, standing up to be counted. You just need to get that cohesion in the team, I think, which will come in time. There are you know, a lot of bright spots for Ireland for the future. And, you know, if you want to see more stats from the Women's Six Nations, I've done a separate video on that, so you can check that out. It goes through, you know, most of the major stats that I could find in terms of what the two counts have been saying. So, Ireland, you know, Dorothy Wall, she's out injured, but she was interviewed, I think it was yesterday, um, in the build-up before they actually knew that she was out. But she was talking about, you know, it's embarrassing to hear talk of Ireland are going to concede a record score and this, that, and the other. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it's a little bit disrespectful to be talking like that. Also, Neve Briggs, one of the coaches, former um, Ireland great as well, said, you know, so much has been dredged, dredged up from the, pa from the past and, you know, it's a bit of a distraction and I just want to focus on the rugby and getting better. Head coach Mac Williams talked about that um, as well um, last week, I think, and during the week. And he's also said that, you know, Ireland are under no illusion at the size of the task that they face against England. And, you know, it's a world-class English side. And kind of the usual stuff as well, looking forward, relishing the challenge and etc. But you've seen as well that the squad are aiming to get better week on week. Simon Middleton, then English head coach, has been talking about how there is a need to close the gap between England, France and the rest of the teams in the Women's Six Nations. The last time anyone won the Women's Six Nations other than those two was Ireland back in 2015. And he was saying that it's not sure if it can continue as it is, but coming down to the final game between England and France every year. But we have seen, though, that you know Wales are improving. Um, Italy have definitely improved. Scotland and Ireland are a bit earlier in their uh, on their journey in terms of professional contracts, like they're a year or two behind those two teams, and you know several years behind England and France, we can see that the teams are making progress. And sometimes, you know, you look at the score and I think, no, that's, they can't be making any progress. But if you watch the games in full and you look at some of the stats and stuff, you can see that there are improvements being made. You know, you can't just, um, can't just turn things around overnight. It's going to take time. This Six Nations is going to be, you know, very important for the likes of um, Ireland and Scotland in terms of getting experience into their team and allowing those players to develop from the lessons that they learn this time around. In terms of you know how the game is going to go, I don't think anyone is under any illusions that um, England are going to win and probably going to win well, but. I do expect, you know, Ireland to put up a um, good fight against them and they will be looking for, you know, improvements in certain areas and 
just having kind of things to build on. I think for Ireland, the aim will be to kind of put themselves in a good position to, you know, challenge Scotland in that final game. While England, you know, everybody is expecting them to win. They've still got a job to do. They've shown that um, they're not a complacent team. You know, they if they need to fight the way they did against Wales to get dominance in the game and then to be able to play their own game, they're certainly able to do that. As I said, I expect them to win and I expect that, you know, even though Simon Middleton may not like it as an overall thing, I'm sure he'd be happy for his team to be going into that and decider against France still on for, um, I think it's what, a fourth tournament in a row and another um, possible Grand Slam as well. 